liberty. Our country embracing its favorite sports and wrapped in all its glory. Generations of fans on hand cheering their favorites, finding family fun with the highlight of the weekend, some time for football. And here in Happy Valley, Penn State gets ready for the Wolverines of Michigan. And we join Penn State's PA announcer, Jeff Brown. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise and remove your hats as we honor America. Join in singing our national anthem with the Tri-Service ROTC Color Guard in the Blue Band. Today, under the direction of Dennis Glocky, Director of Concert Bands at Penn State University. It's become everybody's favorite fight song. Michigan, Penn State, Big Ten football next. The pop again is missing from his offense for a second straight year, and it could be a long year in Happy Valley. The ride for the Lions quarterbacks has been a rough one, too. Neither able to lift the team on his battered shoulders. It could be another banner year for Michigan. A dramatically improved defense has rattled opponents, and a revamped offense has found a new constellation of stars. This is the 575th game that man has been either an assistant or a head coach at Penn State. And his Nittany Lions, for only the second time in history, are off to an 0-3 start. And a tough task at hand today because they face the 15th ranked team in the country, a team that's beaten them four times in a row, the Wolverines of Michigan. Hi again, everybody. I'm Brad Nessler with Bob Greasy. We welcome you to Happy Valley, where things, quite frankly, aren't so happy right now. As everybody's waiting for that record-breaking win for Joe Paterno, and they may have to wait a while. Who knows? Michigan lost seven legitimate stars on offense last year. Most of them are in the NFL. Greece, uh, one's playing Major League Baseball. They haven't seemed to miss a beat. They're not rebuilding. They're just reloading. That's how good the recruiting has been at Michigan. But they had to replace their quarterback. John Navarre stepped in and done well. One player that has stepped up big time that was a starter last year, come back Marquise Walker, a wide receiver, a big time guy, 27 receptions, four touchdown receptions in the first four ball games. He is a legitimate big threat and a concern for Penn State. This is not the first time we've sent Penn State in person this year. I got to think if their defense makes a statement, they've got a prayer today. Their offense is struggling, the offensive line especially. If they're going to win, the defense has to set the tone and the defensive line. And the leader of that line is Jimmy Kennedy, a big defensive lineman. He's right in the middle of that place. If anything's going to happen for Penn State good, the defensive line, Jimmy Kennedy had a big game last year. He, last week, he's got to bring his A game here today. And speaking of a games the offense is going to be under the leadership of the youngster the left-hander making his first career start that Zach Mills he'll try to get something going for that much maligned Penn State offense what they need is big plays the guy that's on our team that made a lot of them is on the sideline Lynn Swan Swanee that's right Brad what they need are big plays and for those who keep stats a big play is 20 yards or more but for the Penn State offense a big play is something that keeps a drive alive a third down that gets you a big first down anything to get you in the end zone and what does Penn State have to do to get that? Well, simply, 
put the hand, put the ball in the hands of a Johnson. And I don't care which Johnson. It could be Brian Johnson, Tony Johnson, or it could be Larry Johnson. These are the guys that can make it happen, especially Larry Johnson. He's a quiet man off the field, but Brad, on the field, he plays aggressive, and he plays angry, and he wants it bad. And these, and these fans behind me, I think they want it bad, too. Michigan with a kick five yards deep Penn State will not bring it out. And so the Penn State offense with Zach Mills at the controls as we said making his first career start we saw him in extensive action against Miami with Matt Seneca with a bad shoulder. Here comes the kid to make his first start a redshirt freshman out of Jamesville Maryland. A little bit of pressure in front of a big hometown crowd but. He's seen a lot of action in the first three games, but this is the first time he has had the pressure going into the game. And they'll work from the 20-yard line. Mills is going to throw on first down. It's got his man in out of his hands. And it was Eddie Drummond who should have had it. And there we start right where Swanee talked about making a play. And Drummond should have had that. And it should have been a first down. That's been the problem they've had all year long. Not an easy catch. It's a slant, and he's in traffic. But the ball is right on target. Right there. You got to make the play and then take the take the hit. Charles Drake is the guy that gave him the hit. So it's second down and 10. Drake starting at that safety spot with Julius Curry out today. He and Cato June are the two starting safeties for Michigan. On a second and 10. Mills again will try it this time. And another drop ball, Brian Johnson. Well, already the Boo Birds are out. The Burger King starting lineup. Here's the Whoppers up front. Felder, Ransom, Iorio, Linda, and McKelvey making just his second start at right tackle. Johnson, McHugh, John Gilmore is a tight end. Tony Johnson and Brian Johnson. And we just saw Brian Johnson drop that last pass. So the offense of Penn State, as I said, much maligned. and uh, Two throws, two drops. Sean McHugh is the guy flanking Mills in the shotgun right now. They fake the handoff to him and go deep down the middle, and Gilmore dropped it. Those are three catchable passes, and that is the way the Penn State season has gone so far. You got to give credit to Mills, the redshirt freshman with the first start. All three of the balls were on target. The first and the third one were tough catches. This could have been made by Gilmore. You got to come down with it. Your, your, your offense has not scored a touchdown in the first half. Make a play. Help your quarterback. David Royer now after punt. He's been a busy punter all year, and he had it partially blocked. Somebody got a hand on it. It's going to roll out near midfield, and that's about it. Michigan will have great field position. Looked like either John Shaw Or Anthony Jordan. Let's take another look. Right in the middle of the pile, running by Royer. We'll get a better look here. Right here, right up the middle. Comes right up the center. You can't have that. Whew. So now the offense with great field position for Michigan. Draw play to ask you. Only got about a yard. There's John Navarre. This is the guy Bob mentioned, the sophomore, taking over where Drew Henson was a star last year. And of course, he started some of the games last year when Henson was out with an injury. He's put up impressive numbers so far. This is his ninth start. He is six and two as a starter, but both of those losses, one this year and one last year, have both been on the road. Pickup of a yard. Michigan working from its own 49 yard line with a road car. His seventh season as a head man of the Wolverines. Nice play fake by Navarre on a bootleg. In trouble and down he goes. Michael Haynes, a guy that the Penn State coaches says has to pick up his game, and he did there, and that's a big sack. This is a play Michigan has run for years and years, and Haynes does a nice job of being aware and alert. Fake it to the uh, fullback, sprint out. Now you're looking for tight ends coming across the field, and there was nobody open, and Haynes gets the first sack of the game. 
Nice play, stay wide. Good play. Third down and 16. And they're starting to rumble Beaver Stadium here for the defense. Screen pass, Askew. Got some blockers in front. Colonel's a man, he's got a first down and a bunch more. Down the sideline, all the way to the 23 yard line. This is just a nice call by the offensive coordinator, Stan Parrish. It's third and long, you would think that Penn State might be looking for a screen. But no, screen to our left side. Right here. Right there, the jump over the defensive man that just tried to throw a block instead of make a tackle. By the way, that's legal in college football this year, yes. starting for the first time, exactly. a hurdle like that. 36-yard yeah. pickup. And now back to the ground game. Askew's got a blocker in front. It's a nice play defensively by Shamar Finney, the middle linebacker. Michigan offensively up front. Pape, Goodwin, Anderson, Petrozello, and Solomon across the front wall. We've already seen Askew carry the ball several times. He'll pay both fullback and tailback, where Walter Cross will split some time with him. Seymour, the tight end, and Bellamy and Walker are the wide receivers. Marquise Walker leads the Big Ten in receiving. Askew, the guy that carries the mail. Two touchdowns last week on an 80-yard performance in the win over Illinois. Cross comes in now to join him in the backfield on second down and 11. From the 23 of Penn State, Navarre, plenty of time, has time to pump and come back to his second receiver. And Askew's run out of bounds at about the 14-yard line. Burger King starting defense for Penn State. Here's the guys that Bob talked about. Jimmy Kennedy, one of the best around, with Adams, the other tackle, Jones and Haynes, the defensive ends, and Haynes already has a sack today. The linebacking core, Tolls is in there with Finney, their defensive captain, and Tom Williams, a former walk-on. And the secondary. Not what they're not used to around here. Not at all. Brian Scott will be the guy matched up much of the day with Marquise Walker. Mayor, Israel, and Branch round out the secondary. There's a guy that will be busy today with one of the best receivers in football. Three receivers to the left. They get it out to Walker. He had a couple blockers in front, but slicing through there to make the stop. Sean Mayer. And Yaakov is Israel are there, and they make the hit. Pick up the first down, third and three. Three guys lined up in a bunch situation. He throws to the one behind. The two front guys get a block. That's a Thompson number four, 84. Thompson 84 gets a block. Both tight ends are out there. Jopu is 83. So you put your two tight ends and your best receiver out on the left side, and you pick up the first down. Well, they've got it first and goal, Michigan. Remember, this follows a partially blocked punt, an excellent field position. So they've had a short field to work from. Our referee, Dave Whitvoat, momentarily stops play. Now he'll whistle it back. And it's first and goal at the nine. Play action to cross. Navarre's got all day. Walker's got the catch. Immediately knocked out of bounds just inside the six. It'll be second down and goal. This is just a wonderful throw. He puts it right on the money. The defensive back was in great coverage. He looks downfield, doesn't see the open man, and then comes off. If Branch could have been in a little bit better shape, he might have been able to cut in front and make the big play that this Penn State defense and this team needs so desperately. Red zone has been good to Michigan this year. Opening drive for the Wolverines. Draw play to Askew. Broke a couple tackles, and he got down to about the two-yard line. That should have been at least a one-yard loss. He turned it into a short game. You know, Michigan lost Anthony Thomas from last year's uh, squad, but they just reload with Askew. They've got other running backs in the stable as well. Somebody's got to make a tackle, but this is a shifty running back. Chris Perry is back, ready to play today. And also Walter Cross. They've got plenty of offensive backs to put in there. Ninth play of the drive, third down and goal just outside the Penn State two. Askew now the single setback as they send a trio to the top of your screen again. That's the way Navarre's looking. Throws incomplete. And Penn State's defense is held. Same situation with the three at the top. The bunch look. Two tight ends and Walker. And this time they tried to hit Jopru, the tight end. 
Lloyd Carr, 61 wins in his seventh season as a head man. He's done a great job against unranked teams over his career, which is what Penn State is today. Epstein to try the field goal of 18 yards. This is basically an extra point, and it's a fake. And Gonzalez, did he get there? And I've given it to I him. don't think so. Penn State has stopped it. Last week, the trick plays were good to Michigan. Today, they try a fake field goal, and they come up short. Gonzalez looking up at the replay screen. Yeah, they're going to snap it here. They're going to try to get right up into this group right here. But watch it. They're going to get shut out. Look at this. Boy, that was close. I think, I think the ruling is that the knee was down. Let's take a look. See if the knee is down before the ball. Yeah. It looked like his knee was down, and then the ball crossed the line. That in, that in line is in the end zone, so all you have to do is touch the edge of it. For a touchdown. That's where Penn State's offense is, is in the end zone. Mills to throw. Comes out, fires, got him in, and this one's caught by Bryant Johnson. I thought he was going to drop that one, too. Unbelievable. We were told, Joe told us yesterday, and Fanny Gannon, the offensive coordinator, says, unlike Penn State in the past, we're going to have to throw the ball to set up the run. Four plays for Penn State and four passes. Redshirt freshman. This one he caught twice, Brian. <laughs> Somebody's got to help him out. Come on. So a big, big play. Brent Ganner, the offensive coordinator, looking on to pick up a 22. And have some breathing room as the sun shines over the Penn State offense. Mills, quick drop. Might be dropped. Run down from behind. Let's check in with Lynn. Brad, Bob, I think these receivers are just playing without a lack, without confidence. And if I might go far enough, I might say they're even playing scared. They're so afraid that they're not going to make the play. They think it's exactly what's going to happen. I mean, it's just got the, they have it in their head. You've got to be confident and believe you're going to make the play happen and not play with that kind of pressure. These guys have put too much pressure on themselves to make plays. I they, agree with you, Swan. They've, they've had some success, but not a lot. Drummond certainly has had some success. Just not this year. Yeah. <laughs> so it's second down and a long nine. Here comes a blitz. Larry Johnson goes through a hole. He's got an opening. Johnson's close to a first down. Michigan defense doesn't give up much on the ground. And here's the Burger King defensive front. Rulashek, Boyer, Lazarus, and Orr. They didn't stop Larry Johnson from a first down that time. Two great linebackers in foot and Hobson. Bracken's the other outside backer. The secondary, as you might guess, always strong. We mentioned Julius Curry not in there today. So Todd Howard, Charles Drake, Cato June, Jeremy Lesur are the guys that are in the secondary. And a little bit of a switch at the safety spots with Julius Curry out. First down as Johnson got the first across the 33-yard line to hear the 34. Play fake by Mills in trouble. Battles his way back to the line of scrimmage. No score here as we check in at Times Square Stadium in New York and John Saunders. John? Right on the Coors Light update. What a finish in Knoxville. Georgia had given up the lead in the final minute, but David Green comes back six yards to Veron Haynes, the first time Georgia has beaten Tennessee in Knoxville since 1980. That was also a comfortable behind victory. Right. And that was Herschel Walker as a freshman, as a matter of fact, yeah. running over Bill Bates. How about Mark Rick, the, the new coach at Georgia with a big win? That's a huge win. Huge. Second down and 10. Mills, the blitz. Oh, what a shot, but holding on was Sean McHugh. <laughs> Todd Howard, a good cornerback, maybe better than good. And boy, was he waiting yeah. in the path of number 82. And a lot, of, a lot of good things there for Michigan defensively. They had a linebacker blitz. From this side over here, you're going to get in the face of Mills. Mills gets rid of the football, gets it to McHugh, and then Howard sees it. Jim Herman, defensive coordinator, likes to put pressure and likes to blitz. And McHugh, the guy that made the catch, had six catches last week, and he was shaken up on that play. He's a big and 6'5", and almost 260. They're working on his lower leg as he had the collision out there with uh, Todd Howard the senior cornerback they really like this guy uh, McHugh he is uh, like you said he's huge he's he came in as a tight end he's playing the fullback position you don't see many fullbacks that are 6'5 and close to 260 but uh, 
he's more of a moving tailback, like an H-back. He's mm -hmm. half tight end, half fullback. But they threw, like you said, six balls last week, and he's already been a big part of the game plan here today. And Joe's worried because he was going to be a big play, part of the game plan right, right today. And they've got to put in Paul Jefferson now, the sophomore, in his stead. And he cannot do the things that McHugh could do. Penn State with a third down eight. Mills has done a nice job so far. On the roll, he might keep this one, but he won't get the first down. Got only about a yard. Maybe he didn't get that much before Jeremy LeSueur knocked him out of bounds, and Penn State will have to punt, but they won the battle of field position on that deal. Exactly. Nobody open. That's okay. Don't make a mistake. You moved it from the one-inch line where, no, where, where, where Michigan was about to score out to the 35. Now you're going to punt. A lot of times when you're in the offense, punting is okay. And Royer will do so. Much better punter than a year ago. And his first one partially blocked. This one, it gets away clean. Bellamy waits on it at the 21. And down to the 29. So far, the fans have enjoyed what they've seen of Penn State. And Michigan will be back on offense for the second time when we come back. No score in Happy Valley. The guys have played on the 82 championship team right there. <laughs> I don't know if Blackledge is without, one of those guys or not. Without a face mask. <laughs> Here's Navarre on the roll. In and out of the hands of Bruce Branch, who almost picked it off. Almost made a big play. The defense has got to step up. Michigan rolling out, getting outside the pocket. Navarre, Navarre comes back. He's only seeing his receiver. When you're running out like that, you, you look at the defense, not your offensive guys. You know where they're going. You need to throw it around the defensive backs. Second and 10 for the Wolverines. Draw play. Askew cuts outside. A nice stiff arm. Heading for the corner, but they won't let him get there. Nice pursuit by the Penn State defense. Ryan Scott. Got back there with Derek Tolles to help the stop, and let's take a look at the Pontiac Game Solutions, Bob. When Michigan, when you're on the road, you got to keep your balance. That means running past and let the Lions sleep. Don't help them. Turnovers, penalties, things like that. Penn State, the defense has to lead the way, and offensively, you got to throw early to set up the run. The first five plays for Penn State were passes. They've done those bottom two beautifully so far. See if their defense can get another stop. Third and three. Navarro down the middle. Got his tight end. Big target in Bill Seymour. And he's got a first down. Seymour with his 12th catch of the season. Seymour's over here. He's just going to come down and find the center of the field. And when you've got a tight end that can get open in the center of the field, you can move the ball right down the field. Look at the open. How open he was. You got backs to throw to and tight ends that can get open. You can move right down the field. They got three good tight ends. They in do. Fact. They've always had good tight ends. At the 47, fake the end around and go straight up the middle. They like that play. It did well for them against Illinois. And Askew got about six that time before Jimmy Kennedy could track him down. But they have moved back into Penn State territory now. Jimmy Kennedy. Just outside the Penn State 47. We've got. 6.15 left in the first quarter. No score. If you just joined us, Joe Paterno looking for his first win of the season, the 323rd of his career. And what is now a sunny, beautiful day. It was cold and windy this morning. Wind still could be a factor before this one's over. Askew. Boy, nice second effort for the second time for him today. Williams and Finney make the tackle. He's a little bit short of the first down. Michigan has the win. As you mentioned, it is a factor. 15 to 25 and gusting stronger than that at times, but still a prettier day than when we first got over to the stadium a few hours ago. You know, go back to the, the Michigan's first drive when they were on the one one foot line going for a field goal and they tried the uh, fake to go in for it. Everybody says Carr is a conservative coach. <laughs> well, I like to call and that'll help him down the road because other teams, when they see that, they'll know that, hey, something may happen on the punt team or the field goal team. Askew's got a first down. Down near the 40-yard line. Anybody that might have watched the Michigan-Illinois game last week knows that uh, Lloyd Carr wasn't conservative in that one either. Yeah. 
Yeah, and also Lloyd Carr. Remember what he told us on Wednesday? He wanted to make sure that Penn State didn't do anything early, so he tried to want to get in the end zone to kind of keep them down early in this ball game and not let them see any life whatsoever. Navarre going down toward that end zone. Incomplete. Tended for Calvin Bell. So they went long ball. When they get you down in that 45 yards and in category, they're liable to pull the plug on you. Navarre's five out of eight. But he had a receiver on the other side of the field that was wide open. Going straight down the field. Bellamy, see he's looking to our right side. If he would have come back and thrown down the left seam, it was a, it was a pattern that called four vertical. Four guys straight down the field, two down the sideline, and two up the hash marks. And you have to look off the free safety. That time, Bellamy had it beat. they got four receivers out there for Navarre right now in second down and 10. He goes across the middle, out of the backfield. Askew's got a first down and then some down to the 25-yard line. And another first down, a pickup of 15. So they spread everybody out, two wide outs to each side, and they hit the running back out of the backfield down the middle. Well, everybody is spread out. Everybody is running straight down the field. And then you throw it to a guy that's caught a lot of balls. That's 30 balls, 30 pass completions to ask you coming into the game. And I think that's already, what, his third? Third ball that he's caught here today. For 60 yards. Another first down. Wolverines at the Penn State 25 with four and a half to go. First quarter. Ask you. Left side. Gonna have a first down on the ground this time. This is what they did in the second half last week after they got up on Illinois. They gave it to number 35, and you said basically take us to the victory. Now, 84 is Thompson, the tight end. This is what we talk about in the game solutions balance, run and pass. If you take, if you can go on the road and take a running game with you, that's the best thing that you can have offensively because you're gonna be able to throw the ball, but if you can run the ball, everything else opens up. Michigan coming in 160 yards a game on the ground, which is eighth in the Big Ten. Run! Straight up the middle again with the follow fake of that end around, and you can bet they'll keep doing that, and pretty soon that guy coming around is going to get it. Williams makes the tackle on Askew, who got about three. Joe Paterno in his 36th year as the head coach. We mentioned he's been around here forever. As an assistant under Rip Engel before that, so the 52nd year he's been on this staff and 575 games he's coached in. Holy smokes. <laughs> yeah. And you know he's not even thinking about any of those. He's nope. just thinking about this one and the next one. Second and seven. Navarre, they're not getting any pressure on him, but that one he threw way too wide for Ronald Bellamy. Right now, Navarre's standing back there like a statue. He's got all day. And that's pretty impressive because, like you said in the opening, they've lost four offensive linemen from last year, and those four are starting in the NFL today. You got Hutchinson and Backus and those guys that uh, were an All-American. Mo Williams, all four of them are starting. You've got four new starters in that offensive line. Terry Malone, the offensive line coach in that group, are doing a nice job of. I, I saw him before the game, Terry. Said, now you got to go back to coaching. <laughs> Four out of five on third down conversions are going to play it safe here. And Penn State was waiting on it. Michael Haynes yeah. and Gino Capone on the tackle. Joe knows that he's got an offense, a first-time starter. He's got a weak offensive line. The defense has got to do something to get this game, this, this crowd back in the bucket. Joe's got it like that. Yep. And now it's time for a kick, and we, well, maybe not. Navarre is in there. Yes, Epstein's in there. And Navarre to hold. 29-yard field goal attempt. We assume they're going to try this one. Had one block this year. Michigan trying to get on the board. The kick on the way, and it's good. So we played down to the 241 mark of the first quarter. The Wolverines on their second possession do go for the field goal. And they knock it home from 29 yards to lead 3 0. I got to tell you, Thursday at practice, maybe a little more gray in the hair, but pretty much the same guy as yesteryear out of practice, Joe Paterno. 
He gets involved. He gets in. He knows everything that's going on everywhere on that practice field. Here's the kick. And dropped. Picked up by Maku, and it cost him. That fumble at the one. Had to try to find the handle and got only to the 12-yard line. So Penn State's going to have to work in a bit of a hole after a shoddy kick return. So far, so good for Penn State, though. Their defense has played pretty well. Michigan, number 15 in the country, leading by only a field goal. Three nothing. The Wolverines of Michigan with a lead. So look at Marlon Jackson. He is a true freshman. Jim Herman was telling me about him, a defensive back. He said he's the best thing we've had around here, defensive back wise, since Charles, Charles Woodson. Woodson. That's big shoes. That's pretty good. Look, pretty good stuff. Larry Johnson on the give. Made something out of nothing. Got a couple yards on the play. With 2.25 left in the quarter. ABC Sports presentation of college football brought to you by Bud Light. The great taste that won't fill you up and never lets you down. Make it a Bud Light. Pontiac. What would you do with some Pontiac excitement? Discover card for the slightly smarter consumer. And SBC. We're on it. A second down and seven. Here comes a blitz on Mills. They pick it up. And he throws that one out of bounds just to get rid of it. Gilmore was the closest guy. Zach Mills, as we've talked about, is a redshirt freshman, and not many redshirt freshmen, not many freshmen, will play for Joe Paterno at Penn State. Normally, it's the old system where you wait your turn. You wait three or four years, and you play maybe your fifth year, senior year. This kid, because of the uh, situation this year with Seneca, and he was the backup, Seneca being hurt and injured a couple games, has played a lot. And I'm impressed with him. He's played very well and very smart. I think he's been very poised today. At first three passes dropped. Didn't drive him crazy. He's going to look for a block here. Get what he can across the 20. He's pretty close to a first down. That's the one thing that they loved about Seneca. And Fran Ganner would tell us that he's a Joe Cap type. And he's so tough. And because of that, his teammates support him. Well, this kid, I think, is pretty tough, too. And he keeps more runs like this. And they're going to have more and more admiration for him. Say he's, he said he's a cool customer. He never gets flustered. He's very bright. And uh, I've been impressed with him. They're going to have to punt again. They came up a couple feet shy of a first down. Royer's kick, not the greatest. Side to side, it'll bounce near midfield. Again, kicking into that wind. That's that true. Gusting to 20, 25 mile an hour. Got a decent roll, though. It's going to stop back at the 39 yard line. 3 0 our score here. A minor coming up next Saturday. At 12 Eastern, saw to be a dandy. Number one, Miami. At number 14, Florida State. And at 3:30, Wisconsin, Ohio State, UCLA, Washington. Last time we heard, Wisconsin was trailing Indiana 42 to 17 at halftime. Wow, some crazy things going on today. Kansas State, I think, was beaten, weren't they? They, uh, I think they, they got were beat. trailing anyway. Yeah, they got beat by Colorado. Cam Cameron needs a win at, over there at Indiana. He was at Michigan assistant coach for a long time. Look at all those scores and highlights with General Terry at halftime, of course. Here's Askew. Penn State runs him down. Haynes is having a good game, and he got help from Derek Tolles. Michael Haynes, a defensive end, got out there. He's made a couple nice plays so far in this first quarter. He has. He's over here. And Tolles is number two. Haynes is number 81. Watch as Haynes contains the play, stays to the outside. And then, and then Toes number two comes in and makes the play. Derek Toes is a is an interesting young fellow. Isn't he want Lenny? Oh yes, he is. But I, when we go back to Mike Haynes, uh, the way he snaked through that line, I'll tell you about that after this play. All right. Second down, ten. Navar. Screen pass to Askew. Haynes is going to be in on this one too, along with Toes. Same two guys, opposite side. Swanee. Yeah. Well, that's Mike Haynes. He snakes his way through lines because snakes are his favorite reptile, if you want to call it that, or animals. He, he actually had a summer job where he worked at a place called Reptiland, and they reproduced those particular species. And, and he said, it's not a glamorous job, not a lot of fun. Uh, you do a lot of cleaning up and you're straightening up, but you're learning a lot. He says, one day you hope to become a veterinarian. His favorite pet when he was growing up was a boa that he had, a boa constrictor. I just love those guys. I wouldn't want to visit him, but I love those guys. I wonder if he ever took that into a meeting with Joe Paul. 
And a third down and long is coming up, but it's going to have to wait because the quarter has come to a close. Good, tough, hard hitting ball game between Lloyd Carr's Wolverines and Joe Paterno's Nittany Lions. A field goal, all we have on the scoreboard so far. The end of one, Michigan three, Penn State nothing. Set to start the second quarter at Beaver Stadium. And a third down at 14. Navarre's hit all three of his third down conversions to three different receivers. Deep ball's got another one. Great throw. Ronald Bellamy with a catch on a long ball, and it's a first down on a 33-yard pickup. Boy, he's going into the wind, Grease, and he throws a rocket here. Uh, he's big, and he is strong, and he can get this ball in. Inside receiver, outside receiver goes straight down. You're going to throw the ball right over the short zone, guys, and in between the other two safeties. Perfect pass. This is, this is called four verticals, one down the sideline, one up the seam. A lot of teams throwing it, not much better than that. And a little quick opening draw, ask you. I think they're going to call a face mask on somebody, incidental face mask in there as his head got turned around, but he still got about six yards on the carry. Our first penalty of the game, and that's the call. Shamar Finney and Lamar Stewart on. Line of scrimmage at 25. You can watch right there, and it's Haynes. Yep. Good in the run. Incidental five yard face mask. That was on only the defense. incidental. Penalty is from the end of the run, five yards. Results in an though. automatic first down. So There's he got six and you add the five and they go down to the 20. There's a 15 yard penalty if you grab and twist and hang on. And certainly that wasn't the case. Three wide outs now for Navarre with Bellamy in a slot. He pumps once. Lofts it to the end zone. Broken up. Nice play defensively by Bruce Branch. I like the play. Michigan attacking once they get inside the 20 yard line. Let's go ahead and run this. Take a look at the protection. Pumps a little bit. Great protection. Beautiful play defensively by the senior out of Richmond, Virginia, Branch. It'll bring up second down and 10 at the 20. Two tight end set. And both wide receivers to the near side. Now Calvin Bell in motion. They give it to him on an end around. Calvin Bell. And he gets tagged at about the 15 yard line out there by Mayer, the safety, who's a little bit shaky getting up after the hit. Well, Bell's got reverse written all over him, and I'm sure the defensive coaches, Tom Bradley, the coordinator for Penn State, made their players all aware of that. He's carried the ball four times this year, and four of them have been reversed. He's scored two touchdowns, so when they get inside the 20-yard line, that's one of the plays they like. Here's a look at Tom. Bradley, defensive coordinator, who lost his job this week. And our thoughts and prayers go out to the Bradley family. Third down and five. It is bunch. There's the bunch to the left, and that's where Navarre is looking, and he's hit. Dropped by Shamar Finney. Finney with a great blitz, and Navarre never had a chance to pull a trigger. Penn State getting after it defensively. That's an offensive line that has been doing well. They've only allowed nine sacks in four games, but Navarre never saw him. He came from his blind side and a nice design play. It's amazing. The two guys that the coaches told us had to step up this week, Finney and Haynes, have had great first half so far. So now Epstein's going to try a 41-yard kick. He hit from 29 earlier. Kick on the way. And he got it just barely. Tucked it inside the up right on the right side from 41. Michigan gets three more. But again, the Penn State defense has played well to hold the Michigan offense in check. Wolverines in front, 6 nothing. Epstein set to kick off. And the brothers Johnson are back deep. Tony and Larry. This will be Tony a yard deep. Tony Johnson found himself a little opening. Almost broke it out of there. Got out to the 24-yard line. 
Our Pacific Life game summary in this one so far. Michigan's been inside the red zone three times and only six points. Ask you, 99 total yards and a nice job as both a runner and a receiver today. Zach Mills has had his first three passes dropped today and has still hung in there pretty tough. And it's 6 0, 15th ranked Michigan in front. Best starting field position of the day. Not that it's that great, but it's better than what the Nittany Lions have had so far. Just outside their own 24. Here is Larry Johnson. And no gain on that play. Might have even lost a little bit. Shante Orr is the guy that made the stop. Penn State has not done much in the first half right here. They've only scored five points. But look in the second half. Their opponents have only scored 12 points. So if Penn State can hold on to Michigan and keep the game close, the second half, they've played much better than they have in the first half in the first three ball games. Their problem is they sleepwalk through the first half, and by the time they realize what hit them, the nightmare's over in the yeah. second half. <laughs> Here's Zach Mills in trouble. Got away from one, not the other two or three. The pressure game from Freisinger, and then his teammates, Rumashek and company, got there to combine on the sack. One of the things when you when you look at Penn State offensively and you wonder why they haven't scored uh, you've, They've got talent at the wide receivers inconsistent as we've seen dropping balls. They've got good running backs They're inconsistent at the quarterback and the offensive line is just not what it used to be around here They have three starters Hardings Rickenbach and Schmidt that are out which makes it difficult, but th that offensive line is not what it used to be. And thus the rankings you see. Those rankings are ranked. Here's Mills. Deep balls. Got Drummond. Got it. That'll help the offensive stats. Drummond all the way down to the 45-yard line. Well, the strength of this offense is on the outside. The skilled players, Drummond and Brian Johnson and Tony Johnson. Watch the offensive line here and see him give us some protection. Cato June came on a blitz. And number two right up the center. Almost under through it because of the pressure of June, but got it out there, and Drummond makes a play. Drummond's the guy they expected big plays out of this year. And finally, he comes up with one. And Zach Mills had to take one for the team there yeah. after he let go. 37-yard pickup, though. And it's down into Michigan territory, just inside the 45. Mills, look out from behind. Ball is loose. Michigan's got it on the fumble return. And it's Lazarus who's dragged down from behind by Mills. Rumashek with a hit. Lazarus with a recovery. With turnovers, that's the big thing. Lazarus, number 97, going to get up the middle. It was uh, Rubashek that knocked him, uh, knocked him down, fumbled the football, and Lazarus picked it up. Zach Mills probably saved a touchdown there as the big fella was rumbling down near the 20-yard line. Got it to the 21. So just when something had finally gone right for the Penn State offense, they have something go on the negative side and gives it back to the Michigan offense at the 21 yard line. Ask you on a stretch play. Haynes has got him wrapped up for a loss. Ask you has touched the ball 17 times. Here's a look at Rumashek. Watch him. Nobody's going to touch him. Nobody blocks him. Look at that. Nobody blocked him. The tackle let him go. He gets it, knocks the ball loose. Those are the types of mistakes that you can't have in your offensive line. The guy comes from the blind side, hits the quarterback, the ball goes loose, and now you're going the other way. Loss of a couple, second down and 12. Navarre goes in and out of the hands of his intended receiver. Marquise Walker had him hit it, but Bruce Branch was right there with him, and he couldn't hold on. I like the attacking style of the Wolverines. I've seen them in the past where they weren't so attacking. Back in the days of uh, Shem Beckler <laughs> and Gary Moeller and in the early days of Lloyd Carr. But uh, now they're turning him loose. And uh, Stan Parrish has done a nice job uh, offensively. And Bob, I love them. 
what Michigan is trying to do. They're going after Bruce Branch, and that's what I would do. He's got the least experience of the guys in the secondary in the corner. Used to be a wide receiver, but he's going to be under a lot of pressure today. And bar from the gun, under the gun. Down he goes. Jamar Finney's got his second sack of the day. Finney, the middle linebacker captain, came storming through there. Here he comes, number 21. Right up the gut, you had two guys blitzing. Everybody picked up the other guy. That was Scott. And Finney got there. And now Epstein will try a 48-yard field goal. He hit from 41 and 29 earlier. Kick on the way. Not this time. Penn State's defense does the job after their offense gives it up. I think Joe Paterno likes the way his defense is played, and that's what we talked about yeah. to open up the game today, Bob. Exactly. He knew that they need to get into the game. You know, it was, it was something strange as we watched the replay of this kick and the near miss. About an hour and a half, two hours before the game, a bunch of the Penn State players, I mean the whole team, came out on the field in T-shirts and the football pads and shoes. I've never seen that at Penn State before, but he let them go out before the game. I think just try to get them a jump started, get them into the floor of the game a little earlier. Mills back to throw. Got a man wide open, Brian Johnson with a flag down. Johnson down to the 40. Again, there's a flag back at the 45. The ball is dead, the field judge says, at the 40. But let's see if there was either holding or interference before that pass was completed. And I mean it might be interference either way. Let's wait and see. He was wide open. There was sure nobody was. near him. Well, the players, the feeling you get from the players that it's going against Michigan. Yep, obviously it is. You just look out there, and the players normally know. It's a face mix. Yeah. That I did not see. At any rate, Brian Johnson was wide open. And he takes it down to the 40-yard line. Penn State, because of their defense, is one play away from being tied or ahead in this game with 9.53 left in the first half. And now they're walking it off the end of the play. Now that would be a post-possession penalty when they threw it back near the 45-yard line where well, the play started. I don't well, know. If you have if you have a face mask on a play, you go to the end of the play, and then you put the put the foul on on, on top of that. So the play the, the face mask had to be on Bryant Johnson then pretty much. Personal foul, face mask on the defense during the pass. The penalty is declined. First down. Okay, penalties declined. So now they're moving. Now they're moving the line of scrimmage and uh, line of scrimmage back. Is it 97 right there in the middle? Watch him. Looks like he's got a little bit of a right-handed face mask there. The umpire, is he going to call it? We may tell. never know. That was close, though. There's a lot of hand fighting going in that offensive defensive line. First down, Penn State at the Michigan 40. Mills floats one out, gets a short gain. Paul Jefferson, the backup fullback, picks up about four. Time right now for the AFLAC trivia question for this week. Which two teams lead the NCAA in total wins? I'll give you time to think that one over. Meanwhile, we've got second down and a long five coming up just outside the Michigan 35. Mills will work from the gun with three wide receivers. Here comes a blitz from the corner. Shovel pass inside to Jefferson. Broke one tackle. No, he didn't. I take it back. Eric Brackens wouldn't let him go. Well, if he would have given up his shoe. <laughs> or his leg. He could have gotten free. <laughs> <laughs> he might have had to give up the whole leg. I don't know. Yeah, give it up. The old shovel pass. Let him come up, then slide it forward. That's a forward pass. Brackens, 51. He's holding on. Yep. Now, he, ain't he got more than his shoe. <laughs> he got his lower leg. Yeah, it's going to bring up third down. It's a big third down for Penn State. They came into the game 29% on their third down conversions. Eric McCoo will flank Mills now in the shotgun. The man coverage everywhere. Oh boy. They blew that one up. Hobson came flying in there. 
You can't do something that slow against an aggressive defense. Shanti Orr was there as well. You just can't do something. You're holding the quarterback in there and letting them go. Felder 72. We talked about the offensive line. Over here from this side, watch as they're going to have both guys come. Hobson number six comes first, and then Orr comes around. Royer's got to get one down in tight here. He might have hit this one too much. No, he didn't. Great play down here by Tony Johnson, who caught that one on the fly at the five-yard line. That's good punt coverage. And we got a hard-hitting defensive football game going on in Happy Valley. Second quarter has 8.04 remaining. It's 6-0 Michigan. Our Nissan drive summary for Michigan. Four drives in the red zone. They lost it on downs. They missed a field goal. They hit a couple. That's all the scoring we have. They've had uh, two drives, uh, one the drive of 10, uh, 10 plays, the other of 13 plays. They've moved it. They just haven't gotten into the end zone. Now they're backed up near their own goal line. Askew. Jamar Finney made the tackle after a pickup of about three. Askew closing in on 50 yards, rushing in the first half. He's up to 44. He's already carried it 14 times. That was his 15th carry. He has caught the ball four times. So that's 19 times that Askew has touched it. And Michigan has had it uh, 32 times, 33 plays. He's getting some work. He's they're working the man. <laughs> and as, as my old friend Keith Jackson used to say, we don't belong no union and it ain't heavy. <laughs> <laughs> he's going to carry it again. It's still not heavy, but he still didn't get a first down. <laughs> he's going to bring up a third down situation for Michigan again. This time third down at almost three. We have a little over seven minutes. There's the numbers now in BJ. He came into the ball game uh, as their leading rusher and one of their top receivers. Averaging five yards a carry coming in. Five touchdowns on the ground and one as a receiver so far this year. Third down, a short three. They go with. Triple package out there trying to throw a little screen out for some blockers, and they don't complete the pass to Marquise Walker. Penn State's defense does it again. Yes, they have. And their fans showing their appreciation of that now. Penn State's problem has been the first half play. They've gotten better as the game has gone on. Take a look at Derek Tolles, number two, was getting out there. Poor throw, poor execution. Now Bruce Branch waits back at the 45 of Epstein's punt from his own end zone. Nice kick. Branch way back to the 31 yard line. And down he goes. Nice coverage. Dropped at the 36. Brandon Williams makes the stop on the special teams on the punt return. So Penn State. We talked to Brian Johnson number 32 trotting off the field and he said he thinks his Nittany Lion teammates need to show a little more fire out here. I would like our team to show more emotion. Um, I think we're aggressive. Uh, you know, we fly to the ball. We're trying to make big plays, but we just show no emotion, whether it's a good play or bad play. It just seems the team morale is just, it, it's just flat. It just seems flat. Um, I know emotions run high during, normally during a football game. and I just don't see the emotion out there. I'd like to see more of that, and I think that could contribute to what we're doing. Very articulate young man playing in that secondary, and he's had a handful today playing against the excellent wide receivers of Michigan. I think they have shown more fire, and as you talked about, Bob, just that whole thing where they changed up a little bit and came out a little bit early today, and it seems to have helped them. They're only trailing six to nothing with six ten left, and of course, looking if you're just joining us for their first win of the season. There's a loss on that play, a completion on the swing pass, but a loss of one to McCoo, second down 11. Mills in trouble again. Going to have to get rid of it. He did and completed it somehow. Pickup of almost three. John Gilmore made the catch. Todd Howard on the tackle. We asked you the Aflac trivia question earlier. Which two teams lead the NCAA in total wins? The answer, we gave you time to think about it. 
Yale and Michigan with 808 victories each. That was a tricky question. We asked that at our production meeting the other night. I said Michigan number one and Notre Dame number two. That would be Division 1A. I hate that when those guys come up with those tricky <laughs> yeah, questions. Uh -huh. Third down conversion time. It hasn't been great for Penn State. One of five. Mills in trouble. Ball is loose again. Who's got this one? The pile up at the 40. It's Penn State football, but they're going to have to punt. Gilmore, the tight end, I think is the guy that got back on top of it. Sometimes punting is not a bad thing to do. You've got to teach your young quarterbacks. They always want to do something. They want to try and make something out of nothing. This is not his fault. Zach Mills got to hold on to the football. It's amazing that Penn State got back on that. Punting, punting is not a bad thing when you're playing a tough defense. That time clock in Zach Mills' head, Bob, seems to be getting longer and longer. Yeah. Bellamy. Richard Gardner took that right off the shoulder pads of Bellamy. There's your big play. Gardner, a sophomore out of Chicago. You talk about heads up. Watch this. Well, he's in there right. Bellamy is in there because Julius Curry is not here. He would normally be back playing that position. Michigan has made some mistakes in their kicking game, and Penn State has recovered a couple of and blocked. They blocked two kicks and uh, scored on those. So Michigan made a mistake. Penn State takes over. That is as good a special teams play as you might see all year. First down, Penn State at the Michigan 22 now. Mills thinking the end zone and throws it out of bounds. Gilmore was the closest body, his tight end. And Mills has missed his last six pass attempts. Had hit his last six prior to that. Beg your pardon. Yeah, he's 8 of 13 and 101 yards. And he's carried the ball like eight times for minus 13. Those were all on scrambles. This is obviously the best field position that Penn State has had in this ballgame. They get a touchdown out of this. This place will erupt like it hasn't so far this year. Second and ten. Mills, quick drop. Got it out complete. Tony Johnson got about five. And the clock winding down near the four-minute mark. Tony Johnson last week making his first start. We kidded around. Swanee did about the Johnsons. Get it in the hands of the Johnsons. They got enough of them out there. Yep. Tony and Larry are brothers. Bryant not related. And Tony trots out now. And, and in that huddle and on the Penn State team, a little lack of confidence. Offensively, they all know they have not scored a touchdown in three and a half games this year. Third down, five. First down. Here comes the end around Eddie Drummond. Drummond's got a seam it closed in a hurry by Todd Howard. It was Bryant Johnson, not Eddie Drummond. And Todd Howard shows the kind of player he is. They're going to fake this. They faked it many of times. They've given it to the running back, and now they give it to him the reverse. Drummond sees the seam, but Howard comes up and makes the play. That's just two good football players right there. That was my fault, Bob. That was Bryant Johnson on the carry on the end around. They're short of the first down, and they're going to bring out the chains, I think, to look at this and see just how close it is. You know what? You know what? The, Joe's buying some time to make a decision because yeah. he knows he's short, but it's close enough to have a measure. I don't think it's a yard, though. I think it's like a football, maybe. Well, maybe two. That much, anyway. You haven't scored a touchdown in the first half all year. You're in the game with Michigan six to six to nothing. What do you do? If you go for it and you don't make it, the confidence of your offense goes south. If you kick it and get three points on the on the on the board, you go in at halftime, maybe only six to three down. They're going to go for it. They got Larry Johnson in there, along with Zach Mills. They respot the ball. Michigan is, I mean, uh, Penn State is averaging 
46 yards per game. That is last in all of the NCAA in rushing statistics. They are last in rushing. And Michigan is the best in the conference and seventh best in the nation against the run. Against the run. Larry Johnson will be the single setback. Fourth down, less than a yard. Oh, and somebody moved early. I think Linda, the right guard, came out too quickly. And that'll kill your momentum. And look at the expression on Joe Paterno's face. Those are the kind of mental problems that have killed them all year. Right the snap. Any opportunity for a first down Offense. is gone by Five the boards yards. now. The down remains four. Tyler Linda, the right guard. Watch him. You're right. See, the defensive man moved a little early. The defensive man in front of Linda moved, and then Linda moved. Oh, boy. See Joe's reaction. And now the kick's not exactly a chip shot. Robbie Gould, a true freshman. This is his first field goal attempt of the season. From 35 yards to try to put his team on the board. The wind swirling a little bit, but at his back, and he pushed it to the right. What a terrible way to end a drive for Penn State. They got a huge break on a fumble of a punt return by Michigan. They got their best field position of the day. They don't do anything with the drive. They go for it on fourth down and have an illegal motion, and then they miss a field goal. The score doesn't change. Navar pumps, fires, almost intercepted by Bruce Branch. He overshot his tight end. With 2.38 left in the half. ABC Sports presentation of college football brought to you by Nissan. Nissan introduces a totally new V6 Ultima, the cure for the common car. Budweiser, with a crisp, clean, refreshing taste you'll find in no other beer. Valvoline's Max Life, the first motor oil formulated for higher mileage engines. And Pacific Life, annuities, insurance, investments. Discover the power of Pacific Life. Bob and I went out there to have a little chat with that Nittany Lion the other day. When we were out there, it was uh, ball loose at the end, blown dead, though. Way after the play, the ball came out. It's amazing. When we got here Thursday, it was sunny and about 83 degrees, and now we got 25-mile-an-hour winds, partly cloudy, and it's about 50 if we're lucky. The wind chill factor broke down about 40 degrees. <laughs> it's changed quite a bit since Thursday. Brad Nessler, Bob Greasy, Lynn Swan, and our ABC crew at Beaver Stadium, about 107,000 strong. Looking on as 15th ranked Michigan's got its hands full with winless Penn State right now. Three wide outs for Navarre on third down and five. Here comes a blitz. Navarre in and out of the hands of his intended receiver. And Gardner, the guy that made the play on the special teams earlier, is the guy that was covering on the play. Well, they had a blitz on. Michigan picked the blitz up nicely. Bellamy got open. There's Gardner, number 25, right on him. Play was uh, ball was just out of his reach. Gardner would have made the play for the tackle, probably would have held him short of the first down anyway. Third straight three and out for the Wolverines now. Epstein to punt near his own 15. Bruce Branch is waiting on the other end. Nice kick again. Branch back pedals. He'll field it at the 32. Made two guys miss. Bruce Branch out of bounds. Nifty little return. Very nice. Of about 13 yards. Reminder coming up at halftime. A minute and 45 seconds from now, the Valley Halftime Show, John and Terry will be at Times Square Stadium as always with scores and highlights from around the country. Some shocking scores. A action today. Yeah, a little bit of action. You see some of the scores on the bottom of your screen, including ones from the Big Ten where Indiana continues to pummel Wisconsin at Wisconsin. That's, That's unbelievable. Something. Penn State now with a minute 45 to work and all their timeouts. Mills wants to throw a screen. Wisely got rid of that thing. Look out now. They want him, they want intentional grounding. They say nobody was over there and he was in the pocket. They're not going to get a call, but nope. 
Lapson came on a blitz. He's been a thorn in the side or a bruise in the side of Mills all day. Hobson and Foot, probably two of the best linebacker combinations in the country. Mm -hmm. And they're both playing for the University of Michigan. 17 is Foot, six is Hobson. They both came in as defensive backs. That's because that's why they wear those numbers, and they just moved up to linebacker. Both are Butkus candidates. Play action, pass complete to Gilmore, the tight end. Knocked out of bounds, but not before he's got a first down inside the 35, and a flag flies in late. Cato June's the guy that put the hit on him, and I don't know if he gave him the business over there or not, but we're going to find out. Lloyd Carr's right on top of it. Joe Paterno's on the far side of the field, and Gilmore's got a big catch down the sideline. Gilmore has always been the receiving tight end. Personal foul on Penn State. Yeah, that's, that hurts. When you're struggling offensively to make plays, penalties, stupid penalties, like moving on fourth down or personal fouls, you just can't have them. You could read Joe's lips. He said, who's it on? After the play, personal foul on the offense. 15 yards from the end of the run. First I didn't down. see anybody over there except Gilmore. Now, usually, after the play, you know, if Paterno finds out who this is, he'll sit for two weeks. He says, somebody else get in there. I'd rather be on the field than on the sideline when <laughs> Joe's mad. Yeah. But we looked. We couldn't find it. We thought somebody was tripping somebody. So Mack backs it up to midfield. They do have a first down, however. Mills leveled as he threw. Almost into our camera over there. Charles Drake coming in. Yeah, when, this, yeah, when Zach Mills sees that, we can see it from our monitor in the game, in the game replay. The top of our screen, you can see him moving up. Zach's got to see that and know if he's got it blocked or not. Now, one of the problems with starting a fresh, young quarterback, he may not know when he has everything, everybody blocked and when he doesn't. you got to know who's blocked and who's not. And if that guy's coming up on the outside is not blocked, you got to do something quickly. Three timeouts remaining. Zach's body is going to be the same color as his jersey by halftime. <laughs> like that. Well, that's what we talk about. Rumashek got him this time. That's what we talk about in the offensive line. McKelvey, 75, the right tackle, is playing for Matt Schmidt. Matt Schmidt got mononucleosis a couple of weeks ago, and he's out of it. Right here on this side, Rumashek just runs around McKelvey, who is starting only for the second time in his career. Kelvy, that sophomore, just his second start. Penn State has had its share of problems. Drop balls early, three in a row on the opening drive, as a matter of fact. Partially blocked punt, set up Michigan with good field position, which led to a field goal. And then their quarterback has been manhandled today. They missed a field goal moments ago as Gould. Drive his first kick of the year. Joe Paterno shows hey, what which, uh, everybody which, in the stadium is doing. showing me is everybody's uh, contributing here. I think so. Except the defense. The defense has uh, held up their end of it pretty well. Swanee? Yeah, well, Bob and Brad, it was just like what Fran Ganter was telling us on Friday morning. And he talked about last week's game for Penn State. And he said on the one series, they're trying to move the ball down the field. And there were two or three or four just mental errors by the team on one drive when it could have been seven points for his team. This is what Penn State has been fighting all year long. They get the opening drive, three drops, which clearly could have been three first downs, and all of a sudden you make a good play, it's a penalty. And, and there's no way of figuring out how to correct that just that easily. They thought that if they just didn't kill themselves with mistakes today, they had a chance. They still got very much of a chance. We've got a half left, and they're only down six points. But some of those mental errors have cost them big time in this first half. Mills throws. Ryan Johnson trying to make a diving catch over there, and he didn't have enough territory to work. That was a smart play. You see what they did? They can't block, so they get Mills outside the pocket. you got to mix that in some, but uh, obviously you're looking at Penn State and you're wondering why their offense hasn't scored. I think it all gets back to the offensive line. I do, too. They just don't have the players that they've had here in the past in that offensive line. David Royer to punt. Remember last time Bellamy bobbled it. And Gardner took it right off his pads. That was a big play, but it didn't lead to any points. Bellamy fields this one cleanly on the fair catch at the 20-yard line. 
So Michigan will have it back with a minute and seven seconds before halftime. Reminder coming up Monday night, live at 9 Eastern, the high powered Rams will be in Detroit to take on the Lions. Indoor on a fast track. Whew, boy, I'd be backpedaling if I was a Lions. <laughs> Monday night, 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific on ABC. Hey, you know, I'd like, I'd like to play the Rams, but I'd like to play them outside. In the slop. In the slop, <laughs> in cold weather, and rain. You know? That's right. And then, then let me see how fast those guys are and yeah. how they throw that ball around. That's exactly right. Yeah. Let's see if Michigan will try to do something with it before halftime. They'll keep it on the ground. They might do something with it anyway. They get out to the 39 yard line as B.J. Askew goes 19 yards. Israel brought him down and now Michigan may change their theory here as they move the sticks with 101 left on whether or not they do want to try to get something before the break. That's Michigan's first first down since the opening minute of this quarter. And now they go to the shotgun. Navarre wide opens Marquise Walker. They've held him pretty much in check today. He gets about nine more before Mayer runs him out of bounds. That's his third reception for less than 15 yards, so you're right. He does so well after he catches it, though. you got to watch out for him. Well, has Michigan had a string of wide receivers down through the years? I guess. Yeah. Including this guy playing in the shadow of David Terrell last year. Yep. The 49 second down in a yard. They can play with this down a little bit if they want to. Navarre throws incomplete, intended for Calvin Bell. And the clock stopped with 48 seconds left. I think Navarre has done a nice job for Michigan. He filled in for Drew Henson last year when Henson's foot was broken early in the season. Played the first four games. Uh, Henson came in in the Illinois game and won that one on the road. And Navarre has played very well this year. He's going to get the first down on the quarterback sneak. Needed a yard on third down, got a couple. And the drive will stay alive, and the clock will stop with 45 seconds while they move the chains. Well, the clock is stopped only until the chains are moved, then it starts again. There you hear the whistle. Now out of the gun, first down. Blitz on the bar. Whoa, Walker got peppered by Gardner. Good play by Gardner. Nice vision, sees everything that's happening in front of you. Sophomore out of Chicago with the big hit on the All-American wide receiver. Timeout taken by Michigan. Watch this hit on Walker. Kapow. There was another receiver going downfield that Gardner was supposed to be covering, but he saw the throw to the short receiver, came off of the deep guide, came up and made the play. Jimmy Mitchell is the injured party down for Penn State. One of the reserve safeties, a redshirt freshman. And looks like he's all right. So 35 seconds remaining. Navarre is a big package, 6'6", 236. And they've had some big quarterbacks, Collins and Elvis Gerbach. Elvis Gerbach. Huh? How about the Elvis? I like though when we talked to the Michigan coaches the other day they said what Navarre has done with his mental part of the game Lloyd Carr says he reminds me of two guys in recent years Tom Brady and Brian Greasy as far as his preparation mentally and film work for a ball game. Well I never will forget uh, Stan Perry's telling me when Brian Greasy was at Michigan and they didn't trust their quarterbacks they wouldn't it was third and seven in a critical situation at Michigan State and they wouldn't let him throw the football and Brian came off and says what's the matter don't you trust me and and from then on then on I think they've loosened up a little bit Navarre on a slant incomplete in and out of the hands of the intended receiver Marquise Walker looked like Navarre had a hard time finding the handle or the laces there to get rid of that ball and uh, thus the incompletion with 32 seconds remaining. Back in 95, the best ever against Penn State, the aforementioned, and I was chuckling because Bob just says when Brian Greasy was there instead of saying when my kid was there. <laughs> 24 out of 46, 323, and two touchdowns. And, of course, Brian, a star quarterback in the, with the Denver Broncos, and Tom Brady, who we mentioned, filled in for Drew Bledsoe Very and got nice. a win for the Patriots last week. Navarre, there he finds a completion down inside the 35, and it is Marquise Walker. Bruce Branch was right there, but a 16-yard pickup. They've still got 26 seconds left. 
Michigan offensively hurried down the field about 30 yards are set up on the shotgun and a throw the quick out Marquise Walker's all alone I think he would have gone out of bounds but there was nobody home to bump him out over there so he tiptoes down the sidelines and gets all the way to the 16 yard line they were ready to just throw this ball out of bounds Quick little throw, nice little out. He's ready to go out of bounds, stop the clock. But he said, nobody's here. Maybe I can make more out of this. Nope, not, not much more. I'm going to get out. He made 17 out of it, though. Yeah. 63-yard drive in less than a minute so far. They took over at their own 20. And the ninth play of the drive coming up. This is picture perfect. I was going to say two-minute work, but it's one-minute work. What do we got for timeouts here? Michigan's got two left. They're laughing. Please reset to 17. One more second. Put one more second 16, back on there. 17. So Michigan in their hurry up Play was has out given of us the most offense we've no seen clock. today. Seven. One of the best re, uh, best uh, referees in the league uh, in all of college football, David Woodville. Bellamy, Bell, and Walker by the wideouts for Navarre. The first down. Here comes a blitz. Navarre stands in. Walker, touchdown. What a catch. What a grab. What a throw. And just like that, in less than a minute, Michigan drives it down and scores. Marquise Walker must have heard me say they've held him in check. It was almost all Marquise Walker on that drive. You'll never see the route that he ran, but you will see the catch. I mean, that ball was thrown five feet above his head, and he went up and got it. Extra point by Epstein is good. 55 seconds and 80 yards into a nine-play drive. Michigan gets its first touchdown. Look at the protection. 32 is... Um, Scott, he's on a blitz, was picked up very nicely. The difference in these two offenses is the offensive line play. The really, bar's getting time to throw. Really Mills, pretty catch. Yeah, for sure. So just like that, the crowd has been quieted. There's Walker. And there's the grab at the end. Four catches on that drive after I had said they held him in check. He just lit it up. They were, you know, Michigan was having some trouble moving the ball, and then they go into their two-minute offense, and then it just they just move it down the field. And people say, you know, why is that? I said, well, it's, it, sometimes you change the tempo. It's a, it's a little bit of a rush situation. You do things uh, a little bit different. They got Penn State defensively on its heels a little bit, and they never let them up. Now just 12 seconds left as Epstein's going to squib one down the field. Tony Johnson's going to try to get over there. Actually, it's going to be covered by one of the up guys, Blosser, the fullback. And we have Penn State coming back out with 12 ticks left till halftime. Donaline halftime show's coming up. John and Terry will have all the scores and highlights. And Joe Paterno still looking for elusive victory number one. And I say it that way because he could care less about the one that everybody's thinking about, and that would be to tie Bear Bryant, of course. You, you, you know you say those words are never true because all he's thinking about is getting one win and then another one. He doesn't care about all that other stuff. They're going to go to the locker room here, down 13 to nothing after really playing a good game on defense until the last minute of this half. Their offensive line has let too many guys get to number seven. And Lloyd Carr's offense sparks it up in the final 55 seconds. They lead 13 to nothing. We'll be joining John and Terry at Times Square Stadium in New York right after this. With a lead on the Nittany Lions, 13 to nothing. Penn State trying to avoid an 0-4 start. And Bob, I thought they played very well defensively up until the last 55 seconds of the first half. Reminded me of a typical Penn State-Michigan game. You know, a lot of tough hitting, a lot of uh, stuff. Like you say, Michigan is, uh, is is doing the things that they've always done, moving the football, attacking defensively. Thing that we're missing is the offense from Penn State, and they've been a little uh, lacking in that. Michigan starts it off with a screen pass, little leap by Askew, and a fake field goal inside the five that doesn't get him. 
The offensive tackle misses a block, knocks it loose from Mills. And Mills has had a tough first half as far as he's been sacked so many times. And Walker gets up for the only touchdown of the second quarter. Walker really quiet until that last drive. And then he was the man, he and Navarre. And now they lead 13 to nothing, and they'll have the ball first as Gould kicks. And this one sails out of bounds. Nope, it's going to be a touchback. I thought it was out of bounds. It's close. Right out on the corner. Our Morgan Stanley well-connected storyline. We mentioned Marquise Walker. Six, uh, rather seven receptions, 67 yards, and that touchdown just before halftime. B.J. Askew has carried it both as a receiver and a runner a lot today. And Zach Mills sacked four times. Just no rushing yardage at all for Penn State. It's been their story all year, as Bob mentioned earlier, averaging 46 yards a game. There was the man right there in that final minute of the first half. First down for the Wolverines. Askew got about three. Askew had uh, 125 total yards from scrimmage in the first half. And he outgained Penn State all by himself. Yeah, that was his 17th carry. He's got 72 yards on the ground. But it's been Askew and Walker and Navarre, but the silent guys are the ones that you don't hear about. Those are the guys up front that are giving him time to throw and opening the hole. Second down and seven. On a play action bootleg. Little loft out there. And a penalty marker down. I think we're going to have a late hit on the quarterback. You're right, partner. And that was Bob Jones, the defensive captain, who popped Navarre after he threw that little pass. And that's going to tack on more yardage. We haven't had many penalties in this ball game. None against Michigan. Roughing the passer. And that would be the fourth penalty against Penn State. And every one of those, you never can find a good penalty, I guess. Every one of the penalties against Penn State has been just killing them Roughing today. the passer. Defense. 15 yards from the end of the run. Automatic yeah. first down. That's too late. Oh, yeah. That's way late. Swanee. Talked to Lloyd Carr as he was leaving the field, Brad, and he said, after paying his respects to the defensive line of Penn State, that he wanted his offensive line to do a bit better job and Michigan of running the football. So they intend to do more of that here in the second half. That was their MO last week once they got the lead on Illinois. They said, here we come, try to stop us. And here they come again. Ask you. And they do stop him after a gain of about two. Swanee Lind uh, uh, Lloyd uh, Carr didn't tell you all the things he was happy with. He just told you. <laughs> <laughs> That's all he looks at. He says, I take all this stuff and put it in my back pocket. I, all these other things are going well. I want to do better in this area. Uh, he's got a... I love those coaches. They got a whole case of bottles that are full of water, and they got that one that's leaking a little bit, yeah. and that's what they think about. That's for sure. That's why they get better. Chris Perry in a tailback now for Michigan. Second down and eight. They fake it to him. Navarre's got all kinds of time. Deep ball for Bellamy. Got him. Touchdown, Wolverines. 53-yard strike from Navarre to Bellamy. Touchdown, Michigan. First drive of the second half. About three or four plays into it. This is something that they saw in the first half that they wanted to come out and run. Stan Perry, the coordinator, getting it called, working it to perfection. Longest play from scrimmage this year for Michigan. And the home run ball to Bellamy. And now Epstein will try to make it 20 to nothing. And does. Pretty looking play. So in the last... Three minutes of play, Navarre's thrown two touchdown passes. Little play action, now he's going to come back. Bottom right, bottom of your screen. The play action held the safety. Israel 15 was suckered up by the hold of the play action. Tell you, anytime you get a penalty, it helps your, your offense get down the field. The roughing the quarterback penalty. So the touchdown to Walker to end the first half, the touchdown to open the third quarter. The reaction of John Navarre now, who's thrown a couple, and it has quieted this crowd. You saw Navarre high-fiving some of his offensive linemen, too. Those quarterbacks know. 
no doubt he's had all kinds of time today. They've gotten nowhere near him. Closest I can remember a game that we've done this year where a quarterback had that much time was in this stadium. And that was Miami's quarterback had all day to throw. Epstein to kick. That's Larry Johnson back there with his brother Tony. Let's see which one will handle it. It's going to be Tony from the six. Out across the 25 to the 27. A reminder coming up next Saturday, ABC Sports brings you a great college football doubleheader at noon Eastern. We'll be down at Tallahassee for Miami and Florida State. Then at 3.30, Wisconsin and Ohio State or Washington and UCLA. Get set for next Saturday's action with previews, analysis, and Terry Bowden's weekly chat show online at ESPN.com, keyword ABC Sports. Keyword over there right now is blocking. That's Terry Malone, the line coach, going over some things that he may have seen that Penn State did differently coming out second half. Penn State, McCoo on a little counter, didn't get anything. Back to the line of scrimmage, that's about it. Larry Foote made the tackle. McCoo hasn't uh, really been much a part of this offense. He's a little bit banged up, wasn't he, Swanee, in the first half? Well, he's a little banged up uh, in the first half, McCoo, uh, but the guy who really got banged up is a fullback, uh, Sean McHugh. McHugh is out of this ball game. They took him back in for some x-rays. Uh, they have not determined just what is wrong with his leg yet. And of course, Penn State always plays injuries very close to the vest. The guy that they plan to throw it a lot to, not a part of this game now since early in the ball game. And Mills goes to his tight end, Gilmore, pick up a 12. That's a first down. Penn State offensively has been much better in the second half of their first three ball games. As we mentioned, they have yet to score a touchdown in the first half all year. Yet to score any kind of points in this game yet. Second half's been better to them, but now they've built themselves a 20-point hole against the 15th ranked team in the country. A team that's beat them four straight years. None of the guys on this Penn State team have ever beaten the Wolverines. First down at the 40. Here comes a design run for Mills. Boy, when I'm short on quarterbacks, I don't know how much I use that play. <laughs> yeah, but when, you, when you're having trouble running the football and scoring points, I think you just do about anything you need to do. I think that's their longest run, though, isn't it? Seven <laughs> yards for number seven. Uh, Jefferson is the fullback on this play, and he's just going to lead him around in. That's foot number 17. He just flows around to the end. And Jefferson, 39, gets a piece of him blocking. It's actually the second longest run of the day. Larry Johnson had a 10-yarder in the first half. So Zach got seven, second down and three. There's a counter. Maku goes down after a pickup of a yard. Victor Hobson knocked him off his pins. Going to bring up another third down situation. Third and a couple. There's Eric McCoo, what he did last year against Michigan. Had over 100 yards and six receptions. So he was the man last year, even though they lost 33 to 11. They went one of five on field goals, and they had five turnovers in that game, which was a season high. And so last year, even though they did some good things offensively, they missed opportunities, and they had too many turnovers. Here comes a blitz. Mills steps in, fires. Johnson's got it. This is Brian Johnson, and it's a first down at the Lions at the 35 of Michigan. There you go. A lot of things happening there. The safety, as you mentioned, coming up on the outside and blitzing, but this time he's picked up from the blind side. Got time to throw, pitch and catch. The receiver, Johnson, gets open, and the throw is there. It just seems as though when Penn State comes out for the second half, they're a little bit more relaxed. Offensively, they take more time. Their assignments are, they get their assignments right, and they get the execution done. At the 35 of the Wolverines. Look out. That got hit from behind. The ball got hit from the front. Rumashek is the one that hit him, and Shante Orr is the guy that stuffed the pass. That's your two ends playing volleyball with your quarterback. On the blind side, that's Rumashek. He's had a field day all day. Yeah, coming around McKelvey over there. We said this young tackle on the right side for Penn State with Matt Schmidt 
out of there has had trouble with Rumashek. He's been sacked four times and hit a, a number of don't, other times. Don't try to count how many yeah, times he's been hit. Here's the option. And Maku back to the middle of the field. Got maybe to the 32. Eric Brackens, part of the group that turned him in and brought him down. This Michigan defense is just so quick. Yep. I mean, there was some space there after he got around the one defender. And then there was about three or four of them there to shut him off. They got eight starters returning, Michigan does. This defense was very young last year. They're a lot better now. They are, sure are. Came in, as Bob, I think, mentioned earlier in the first half, allowing only two yards per carry to the opposition and seventh in the nation against the run. Third down and a long seven here. They're a tough defense because they move a lot, slant in the offensive line, blitz a lot. Here's what Penn State's done on the ground. Way under the average so far. They need seven. They're not going to get it. Pass intended for Jefferson, the fullback out of the backfield. And let's see what Penn State decides to do. They, I think, are too far out to try a field goal, and you'd think they're almost too far in to give it up. So let's see if they go for it. Everybody's staying on the field, so what I'm thinking, apparently Joe's thinking. Blosser, the fullback, comes in with a play from the bench. Here's their fourth down conversion attempt coming into the game. They were one for three on their fourth down conversions on the season, but this is a big one. Fourth and seven. Watch out for Michigan here. They're going to come for some blitz from the outside. Now they back out of it a little bit. Mills from the shotgun. Handley Mockers down. Joel's got to be pulling his hair out. Oh, boy. You just got to be pulling your hair out. Remember when they had fourth down and two feet and they measured in the first half and they came out and they had the mental error and the five yard penalty and there went their opportunity yeah. for a first down. Here they go trying to get a momentum thing going and they do almost the same thing. Yeah. Too much time. It's it just it, when you deal with young players and the quarterback has got to be responsible for that. He's got to be the, the 25 second clock is at the end of the field. You got to see that. And if you can't snap it, you got to call timeout. So now Royer will have to punt. Hangs it up. Lazy kick. Tony Johnson, as he did in the first half, trying to shag that thing down. Couldn't quite get there. And so it goes in the end zone, and Michigan will come out to the 20. The reaction of waiting too long when you want to go on fourth down, I think that says it all. 9-17, third quarter. Michigan still leading by 20. And on the ground they go to B.J. Askew. Only about a yard picked up. Jimmy Kennedy made the tackle. Our Pacific Life game summary. They brought some heat on the quarterback, Navarre, today. Shamar Finney there with a sack, but Navarre's hung tough. He's thrown touchdown passes to Marquise Walker, and then on a beautiful 53-yard rollout, found Bellamy for the score the last time they had the ball. And thus our 20 to nothing Michigan advantage. Meanwhile, his counterpart, Zach Mills, has been beaten from both sides of the ball and knocked around considerably today. Here's a draw play. Askew. He got out to about the 29-yard line. Sam Rui made the tackle. Be third down and short coming up for the Wolverines. Earlier in the day, we talked about Michigan on the road needing balance. That was their 27th run. They've thrown 26 passes. That's pretty good. Offensive it's pretty line. balanced. Offensive line has done a nice job of protecting during the passes and opening holes for the runners. The only reason that's not perfect is that's an odd number. Third down of the yard. They load up on the right side and they run it back into the middle and it stopped by Penn State. Finney is there and so is Kennedy. Let's check in now. John Saunders, Times Square Stadium in New York. John. Brad, in the Coors Light update, you know Notre Dame had never started 0-3, so you know they'd never started 0-4. Carlisle Holiday takes off, breaks a couple of tackles against Pitt into the open field, 67 yards for the touchdown. The Irish win 24-7. Well, congratulations to Notre Dame. They get off the schneid. That's yeah. what Penn State's trying to do here. They've never opened up 0-4. High lazy kick. Bruce Branch camps under it. And he'll take it at about the 22-yard line. Penn State being shut out right now at home, but they've got the football back. We'll see how their offense can do when we return. Nestler with you from Beaver Stadium, where 
The Nittany Lions trail 15th ranked Michigan 20 to nothing. Joe Paterno looking for win number one on the year. And a long ways from it right now, but they've got the ball back at their own 22 yard line. Omar Easy in at the tailback spot. Zach Mills to throw. Completes it out. Blosser is full back out of the backfield. Pick up of five or six. Everybody waiting for Joe to win number 323. We asked him about it recently. It'd be humbling. I, uh, I, I think that uh, I don't think I'm in anywhere naive enough to, or, or fat headed enough to think that there's a, to, to a guy like Brian is a guy that I would want to walk around and say, look, I'm better than Brian or anything like that. I think it's good for Penn State if it happens. Will it happen today? Will it happen down the line? The schedule doesn't get much easier, I'll tell you that much. They've got a week off, does Penn State, and then they've got Northwestern and Ohio State back to back before Southern Miss here for homecoming. Yeah, and, and, and really, those of us who know Joe and those of you out there watching this who know Joe know that whether or not, as you take a look at the schedule, whether or not Joe gets the record or not, I think as a, as a person and as a statesman and as a spokesman for his profession, uh, they were never, there will never be a, a guy that top, to top uh, Joe Paterno. That's very well said, partner. From the 36, pump fake, Mills deep down the middle. It's intercepted. Picked off by Cato June. And June's out of bounds at the 47. When you, when you pump the football, you're going to draw everybody to it. And that's the problem with that play. You beat the guy you pumped, but Cato June came from the other side of the field. Watch this guy. He's going to pump. Right here he pumps. Right there. Now, when you do that, that pump, that's going to draw other people. Cato June comes from the right side all the way across the field, saw the pump, and picked it off. Cato June, who missed last year with a knee injury, comes up with the interception and got it back to the 46-yard line. On the bar with the handoff to Perry. Perry trying to get to the corner, run out of bounds by Sean Mayer. Check in with Swanick. Oh. Bob and Brad, you talk about that last pass play and what went wrong. It's also a mistake by the wide receiver. When you look at it, and that wide receiver comes in, he pumps take it. Yeah, he draws people over. And that pass is thrown more to the center of the field. That receiver needs to get an outside release. That way the quarterback is throwing away from that coverage. He's now drawn to that area. And you can just look at that play and see the way he threw that ball, Bob. The receiver probably ran the wrong direction. Yep, that thing was a heat-seeking ball for the safety coming over and that's what ended up being the case Navarre drops and rolls through a touchdown on this play last time this time throws it out to Walker Marquise Walker into Penn State territory with 540 left in the third 20 to nothing Michigan <laughs> they sell this pretty well don't they? little play action fake a little personal protector out there Big offensive lineman. Good one. Again, other than maybe a couple of blitzes by Finney and maybe a couple late hits, Lamar had been touched much. By the rush of Penn State, that is. They're going to bring some heat this time with a blitz. The pass incomplete. Boy, right after I said it, Yaakov Yisrael came flying in on a safety blitz, and Navar felt that one. Well, he hit him at, at, at just the right time that the ball didn't get where it was intended. There was actually a guy open over there. Or momentarily open, we should say. See, he's watching. He's looking up watching the replay. So where'd that guy come from? <laughs> so that's fourth down and three. You know, that's, there's a look at the replay. He's, he just gets hit as he's throwing the ball. That's the thing that's different about football today than it was 20 years ago. Players can look up and get an instant yeah, replay. That's right. And see, uh, <laughs> they look up before they go to talk with the coach. So they can change their story. If the coach is seeing it up there, oh, I better not say I was uh, not hit. I was, coach, I was hit. You, know, uh, you got to get your story straight because he's looking at the same thing you are. A guy expected to be a big part of the offense today, Sean McHugh, the fullback. 
And that looks like a cast on his lower right leg as he was hit, remember, in that first half by Todd Howard, big collision. It's either wrapped awfully tight or he's got a cast on his right ankle. Penn State does not give information out about injuries. So. Right. Bruce Branch will field the punts right about the 20 yard line. Reminder coming up on Monday Night Football. Kurt Warner and that high powered Ram offense led by maybe the best in the business, Marshall Falk. I don't think anybody would argue with me on that one. They take on Ty Detmer trying to come back from a seven interception game. <laughs> we'll see how he does. That's Monday Night Football, 9 hey, o'clock Eastern, gotta, 6 Pacific. You got to improve on that, huh? Yeah, you got it. First down, Penn State at the 20 yard line. Mills comes up fire, and Brian Johnson made the catch. He's got a first down. Across the 30 to the 31. Marlon Jackson bumped him out of bounds. Our Dodge drive summary. Penn State so far today, 11 drives, seven punts, a fumble, an interception, a missed field goal in the end of the half. And that's when your drivetrain has gone out of your Ram Tough Dodge right there. Yes, sir. Four sacks uh, are not shown on that screen. They got transmission trouble. They got everything going on on those drives. Yep. <laughs> they need to put it in four-wheel drive right here. There's their total yardage. Six yards on the ground. They'll try again on the ground. And maybe one. Larry Foote made the tackle on Larry Johnson. Yep. Foote, no surprise he's in on the tackles. He's leading the... Team in tackles and tackles for losses. In fact, he's leading the Big Ten in tackles for losses. At 11 coming in. We mentioned he's a Butkus candidate. At 84 tackles last year. 12 tackles against Washington, six of them for loss, which was a Michigan record. And he's one of the leaders. Mm -hmm. A home state guy. Six tackles today for Larry, as a matter of fact. Second down long, pass complete. Tony Johnson. Boy, they just hang with you, don't they? Brackens had him wrapped up and wouldn't let him go. They're quick. This defense is quick. Jim Herman, the coordinator. Funny, we talked to Jim last year about, you know, you're young and, gee, you're having trouble, and now all of a sudden, those guys are growing up in a uh, hurry. Yeah, and they're, and they're, and they're still. There's, we mentioned that eight of them came back, and there's only, like, three seniors on the starting defense. So he's going to have these guys back for a couple of years, and now... You know, Michigan, whereas everybody thought they were going to be in the middle of the pack, you got to look at them very strongly to, as a contender to win the Big Ten title. They end up being the leader of the pack before it's over. Mills, design run for the quarterback again, got the first down. Victor Hobson brought him down, but Zach Mills is a tough cookie. He's been hanging in under heavy pressure. He's run when they've asked him. He's run when he had to. That time he got a first down. Talking about the Big Ten, you know, this is uh, this is the first year and in 55 years that the winner of the Big Ten championship will not go to the Rose Bowl. Unless they're ranked one or two. Unless they're ranked first or second in the nation and they'll play in the uh, BCS national championship game at the Rose Bowl. Your Boilers are still undefeated. Yeah, about that. Northwestern and Ohio State play a big one on ESPN tonight. I don't want to take that one in. At the 44-yard line. Here's a counter. Going nowhere. McCo back to the line of scrimmage if he's lucky. Foot has another tackle, number Under, 17. Understand our good friend Bo Schimbeckler did decided not to come to the game today because he wanted to stay home and watch Big Ten football. He was going to watch Purdue, Iowa then at us. 12. Then he was going to watch Michigan at 3.30. And then tonight he was going to watch, uh, what was it, Wisconsin and Ohio, no, Ohio North State. Northwestern Ohio, Ohio State. State. Yeah. So, Bo, if you're watching, you're lazy. Coach, yeah. you should be here with us. He's got his feet up. He's nice and warm. It's a little cool out here. I know you played golf this morning. <laughs> That's a full day. That's a full day. Noon to midnight football. Here's a pass. Complete. Across the 45 is McCool. Only got about three yards. Hops it in foot there again to make the tackle. Not quite a capacity crowd at Beaver Stadium. And normally we don't say that. And it's not necessarily because they came in 0-3. But it is a fall break for the student body. And a lot of them had the opportunity to go home when classes were done yesterday because they don't have class again until Wednesday. So mm -hmm. the two biggest stadiums around Michigan and right here. And Michigan is on the road here and doing well. 
They give us the attendance though at 107 879. I'm not quite sure about that. Mills to throw. And Brian Johnson had been knocked down back there by Todd Howard or ran into it. And so that passed nowhere near the intended receiver and Penn State's got to give it up. Again. Yeah nobody was open. Three receivers were open down this side and everybody was blanketed by a defender from Michigan. And just when Penn State threw that pass incomplete a lot of those fans I was just talking about just started heading and I don't think they're heading to the men's room and ladies room. They maybe thought that was the last attempt to try to get it across midfield and get something going. Royer to punt. Nice kick. And very nice kick. Down inside the five. Johnson and Gardner got down there, and Michigan will be in a hole, but they've got the lead 20 to nothing. ABC Sports presentation of college football brought to you by Dodge. You can take life as it comes, or you can grab life by the horns. Dodge. Original Coors. Nothing beats an original. Morgan Stanley, formerly Morgan Stanley Dean Witter. Move your money, get well connected. And FedEx, shipping at FedEx.com. It's fast, it's easy, and it just got cheaper. Nothing cheap about the uh, stadium expansion here. 93 million bucks over the last couple of years is added to that seating capacity. Uh huh. A few more skyboxes. Mm -hmm. First down, Michigan. Ask you right into the middle of that pile. Kennedy and Finney. Combined on the tackle. And we're down to 110 remaining. There's some of the sweets Bob was talking about. They put in 60 new sweets. What, 10, 12,000 new uh, seats in the stadium? But they didn't fix this side of it. All the money went into the far side of the field. Yeah, there's not a profit center <laughs> over here in this uh, press box. I'm still worried about the ceiling tiles where we are. <laughs> You're hitting your head on the ceiling I know. when you come in. I had one fall on me last year when we were on camera, I think. Second down nine. Uh-oh, there's an opening. It closed at the 15, but Askew with a good run, and it's going to be a first down. He almost broke out of that one, and he's closing in on 100 yards now. Right up the center. Good blocking. Nice lead block by his tight end who pulled through there, and yeah. Crenshaw makes the tackle, or he might have ripped off a big one. 92 yards now for B.J. on 23 carries. Could be the final play of the half, and he breaks into the secondary again. Got about eight or nine out to the 25, and they go from bad field position, terrible field position, to plenty of room to work, and the end of three quarters. And just like that, Michigan with a 20 to nothing lead, and now they can go to their ground game because they know they got Penn State right where they want them. But we've got 15 minutes left. The end of three quarters, 15th ranked Michigan, 20, Penn State nothing. ABC Sports presentation of college football will continue after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Set to start the fourth quarter. Michigan leading Penn State 20 to nothing. And with the ball, and B.J. Askew over 100 yards receiving over the 30-yard line out to the 31. And he's had quite a day. He has. It's a day to bundle up. Into the fourth quarter. Brad Nessler, Bob Greasy, and Lynn Swan with you. The Penn State faithful came here in full force, hoping to see the first win of the season and a record tying win for Joe Paterno, but they're 14 minutes away from being very disappointed again. Straight up the gut. Askew just keeps adding to his total. Six more yards for B.J. He only had 40 yards rushing last year. Did catch 18 passes. Sam Rui, I think, is the guy that's down. But a career-high day now for B.J. Askew, 113 yards. His previous best had been Western Michigan. He had 112 and two touchdowns in that game. But this will be a, a new high for him, and he's done a little bit of everything today and done it very well. Caught four passes, totaling 70, uh, 56 yards, and then got him set up early in the ball game with that little screen pass. 
That went across the middle when they had four wideouts. Got them down in scoring range. Can't tell you the value of a receiver out of the backfield, a back that can catch the ball and run with it. And now he's carried it five straight times for Michigan. And Ruiz being helped off a little bit off the field. There's BJ's numbers, and that's pretty impressive. He's broke, uh, approaching 200 total yards now. 30 times he's touched it. That's yep. a full week's work. Yep. And he wouldn't have it any other way. There were times when he didn't get it. Anthony Thomas was here for mm -hmm. four years at Michigan, started, played most every down, got the ball most all the time. Askew waited his turn. Second down at four. Not much this time. Ron Graham makes a tackle. Reminder at the conclusion of today's game, we'll select a Chevrolet player of the game. Chevrolet will make a thousand dollar contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. Hey, whether you're winning or losing, sometimes it's just fun to be at the game. In this case, Penn State approaching something they'd like to not have in the record books in their 115 year history they've never started 0 4. Well, it's, it's, it's amazing that Notre Dame started the way they started and also Penn State. Notre Dame got off that winless situation today if you missed it with a win over Pittsburgh that pass is incomplete. That's two of the storied football programs in our history of college football it's going 0 and 3 both of them 0 and 6 total. Notre Dame, as you mentioned, winning today. It doesn't look good for Joe. Looks like he may go 0-4 for the first time in the history. Bear have mercy on us. Well, he didn't beat Bear Bryant at his coaching career, 0-4, and, and he's not going to match him or beat him today, it doesn't appear, unless this thing turns around in a hurry. Epstein's punt. Branch trying to clear everybody out of the way. As this one will roll harmlessly down to the 30 yard line with 13 minutes and 15 seconds remaining in the football game. So the Nittany Lions are running out of time. Fourth quarter. They still believe, but they're down by 20. Michigan leading 20 to nothing. Penn State's got the ball back, but they absolutely have to do something with it here, or time is going to run out on them. They'll work from the gun. Mills lofts one for Johnson broken up by Cato June as we check in with Lynn Swan. Swan well Brad you're talking about the ninety three million dollars on the stadium improvements but you can't take it home with you. But Bob Hudzik who takes care of the football fields came up with this idea turf to go and this is as close as you can get to taking home a piece of the Nittany Lion <laughs> football field. I'm telling you his kids came up with the idea uh, Amy and Andy they call it Amy and Andy products and they're learning all about business. So if you want about 150 square feet of pitch uh, of Penn State turf you can pick this up. I like to take that home to Braxton and Schaefer have them grow that in your backyard. Swanee. <laughs> you got it. Here's a handoff Omar easy and out across the 35 maybe to the 37 first time he's toted it today picked up about seven. Easy started the first two games of the year and Joe Paterno said Omar had his chance and he didn't really get the job done so they changed backs. Uh, Larry Johnson didn't do much either today so Omar comes in and actually gets a decent gain. Says nobody likes to be demoted uh, especially to number three in the running back chart but he accepted it and says it's best for the team and knew his place and says I'll go to special teams and do what I can and, and he blocked a kick last week. Here's Larry Johnson back in there now at that tailback spot a third down and three Mills fires oh and it's caught it was almost intercepted and Gilmore took it on a ricochet. Lassure nearly picked that off and the tight end scoops it up for a first down. Well the big tight ends got big hands and he's a big target when you throw to tight ends that's usually the plus right coming at you number 85. Oh that's dangerous. Went right through Lassure's hands. He saw it all the way should have had it should have intercepted it. First down now for the Nittany Lions at their own 43. Here's a toss to easy. And Omar across the 45 out to the 46. Give him about four more yards. Carl Diggs in on the tackle. 
Miami was a huge favorite today and they had to struggle against Troy State then finally put up 31 unanswered points in one Oklahoma and Texas there in the fourth quarter in a close game and some of you will be going to that game from ours. So we remind you of that Virginia Tech shuts out West Virginia. And you look at some of the other scores huge win for Georgia and the SEC on the road in Knoxville big win. Second down at six. Nittany Lions trying to get something going and get that goose egg off the board and try to get in this game. Here's the toss to McCo. And that didn't have a good look to start with, and on top of it, McCo is holding his lower leg. I'm impressed with with Michigan's defense. I know that the Penn State has had trouble scoring points. And they've not played well and, uh, and whatever, but Michigan defensively looks quicker and, and faster than they did in the last few years. Uh, they're more experienced, and uh, this is a tough defense that Penn State's trying to go against today. So it's a third down again to try to keep the drive alive. Under 11 minutes, third and eight. Mills stands in. Now he's in trouble, and down he goes. Sometimes you get shell shocked when you're a young quarterback and they, they blitz so much, and then when they don't blitz, you think they are coming. <laughs> and when you do have time, sometimes you think you don't have time because you've been rushed so much. And the thing you just talked about, the speed of that defense just showed up there. Zach Mills is not a slow quarterback. And he started scrambling out there, and Todd Howard just knocked him down before he ever had a chance. So David Royer to punt again. And Ronald Bellamy back deep. End over end kick Bellamy fair catch called for and taken at about the 19 yard line. So 10 minutes and three seconds remaining in this one. Michigan's got the ball back and they're in command 20 nothing. So Navarre brings the offense back out. This is where Michigan would like to just give it to ask you. Yeah. And start to ice this thing away with a time consuming drive with a 20 point lead, 10 minutes to play. They fake it to him. Levi's going to throw. Incomplete. You know, we're talking about the new seats in the suites over there and they didn't do anything with this side and the, this booth <laughs> everybody I'm reminded you know we all fly a lot and we fly on these small planes and some right and when the announcement when you're leaving the plane she says make, make sure you duck, duck your head because the door the top of the door is lower than the ceiling <laughs> we've been ducking all day <laughs> we have to duck to see out of this booth <laughs> if you stand and we choose to stand today <laughs> try to keep our feet warm <laughs> second down at 10 Askew cuts outside. Branch will make the tackle, but it's another eight yard pickup for BJ Askew. Our Pacific Life game summary. Summary of this one is some dropped opportunities by Penn State. Some speedy defense that's made it tough on Zach Mills all day long. They can close the door on a running back in a hurry. They've held Penn State to a measly day on the ground again. 20 yards on the ground today. I think that might be a Penn State low because I believe the previous worst was against Wisconsin a couple of weeks ago. That was 23 yards. So that's in danger right now. Yeah, well, if you just joined us, they came in averaging only 46 yards per game. So that was pathetic, and this is even worse, just 20 yards. And the amazing thing is, over the years, we've come in here, done games, or done Penn State on the road, and we've seen them rack up 250, 260, 300 yards. Yeah. They'd have guys like Kajana Carter and uh, DJ Dozier. I mean, you can go back to Franco Harris and Lyle Mitchell, and uh, you know, you can go back a long ways when you're talking about with that guy, because he's been here 52 years, 36 as a head coach, and they've had great backs, but they've had, as Bob said earlier, they've had great lines, and they don't have a great line right now. And it might get better. It probably will. There's a big hit. Pickup of about five. The ball comes out. loose at the end. Ball's out. You can tell when the official dropped the beanbag. Bellamy got back. Uh, Perry got back on time of it, though. We're talking about Penn State, I, one stat just jumps out at you, and that is the fact they haven't won a game. But the fact is, when your offense is last in the nation in running the ball, and your defense is near the bottom in the nation in stopping the run. 
If you can't run and you can't stop the run, you're not going to be very good, and Joe knows that. At the 46-yard line, second down and five. Straight ahead with Walter Cross now, and he got about three. You know, and Joe has not changed much. We're out of practice the other day, and he's talking about running backs. <laughs> he says, he's telling us a story. He says uh, about Franco Harris and Lydell Mitchell and how great they were when they were in the same backfield here. And he says, you know, the cool thing is, he said, when I asked Lydell to run through a wall, he'd say, which wall? When I asked Franco to run through a wall, he'd go up and try to find a loose brick. <laughs> I mean, he hasn't changed at practice. Swanee, you know that, too. I mean, he can still kid around. He gets involved. I, I think people don't understand that just look at Joe Paterno and say, you know, the game's passed him by. That's baloney. That's, you know, there's been too many coaches, great coaches, who over the years you've found out after somebody else comes in that, you know what, they weren't so stupid. And, I mean, you can go from Don Shulin right down the list, but uh, Joe never changes. Joe hasn't changed, and he, he continues to have as his number one priority to make college a good experience for the kids, to make them better people, and also to have very competitive football teams, and he wants to win. But when you consider all the things that Joe Paterno has done for football, and we pick up the newspaper, and especially here in Pennsylvania, we're constantly reading about the game has passed him by, he shouldn't be doing this, and, and maybe he should change. Look at all the things he's done. There is not a college coach I know of, and we asked Lloyd Carr, and he agreed, nobody else has done. He and his wife have contributed $4 million back to the university. That's unheard of. I mean, Joe deserves to be here for when he decides to leave the ball game. And the fans forget so quickly the five undefeated seasons and the two national championships in 82 and 86. I think, granted, he's been recruited against because of that 74 years young, his age, his team down right now, 20 to nothing. E.J. Askew on the sideline with his teammates in number 15, Michigan, about set to go to 4-1, and 2-0 and oh in the Big Ten. Penn State with the ball, Lamar Easy with a toss, and that Michigan defense, well, he paid for that game. Defensively, Michigan today, we knew they were going to be tough coming in, and they just keep getting tougher, if you ask me. Four sacks on Zach Mills today. It doesn't count the amount of times he got hammered after he got rid of it. A couple of forced turnovers, only 20 yards on the ground prior to that carry by Easy, and four of 14 on the third down conversion. So right now Penn State has 25 yards on the ground after that last pickup but uh, still an awful day trying to sled away against a good defense. Yeah, Mills is 18 of 31 195 yards and an interception. Set to throw again. Zach has a nice toss. First down. Got it out to R.J. Luke his tight end Cato June made the hit. 14 yard pickup. I think Zach's getting better and better if they give him time. All the time. Uh, this is good. This, you know, the problem is not Zach Mills. That's for sure. Uh, you know, and that's a nice uh, down and out. All the plays, all the snaps that he gets is only going to help him in the games this year and down the road. But, uh, you know, as I look at, 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 at Joe and trying to get the record and we're losing this year, it's not, they're not doing anything differently. In the practice, we talked about the practices. That one high. Incomplete. The things, the thing that I see that are different are just the results. The results aren't there. Let's check in Times Square Stadium in New York, John. Well, Brad, Oklahoma just missed the field goal, and Chris Sims marches Texas down the field. Back to pass, into the end zone, poorly thrown. Antonio Perkins steps in front and has the interception to snuff out that drive. Oklahoma right now with the ball and leading 7-3. Boy, they got a good old-fashioned defensive battle Don't they going know. on at the State Fair. After last year, what they score? 60 some odd yeah. points? Oklahoma? Mills. Gets rid of that one. Yeah, just let me finish on what I was saying before about Penn State and the difference. Uh, the results aren't there. And, and the coaches are there. The coaches are doing the same stuff, and, and they want to be successful. The, the bottom line is Joe just doesn't have the players that he's had in the past. Mm -hmm. He doesn't have the linebackers that they've had in the past, and he doesn't have the offensive linemen. Those are the two areas that are just jumping out at you when you look at the roster. It's hard to make lemonade when you're working with grapefruits. 
<laughs> I don't know what that means. But. Third down and ten. Mills. Boy, he hung into the last second and incomplete. And Hoyer. Work. Marcus Curry on the other end. Went down on his tracks. Nice job on the special teams by Penn State to stop him there with 547 remaining in the football game. And Michigan in control. Take care of the football. Players of the game in this one. BJ Askew, marvelous day for him as both a rusher and receiver. And Shamar Finney's played awfully hard at linebacker and had a couple sacks today as well for the Penn State defense in recognition of their efforts. Chevrolet will make a thousand dollar contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. Senior defensive captain Shamar Finney out of Shelby, North Carolina. And BJ Askew, the junior out of Cincinnati, who had his best day on the ground today. As his previous best was 112. He went over that. John Navar was in the running. We can tell you that. Yep. He put up big numbers today. 246 and two. Walker was on the running. Mm -hmm. so back up, the backups for Michigan are in there now, getting a little action. Gonzalez throws to his tight end, and that's complete. ABC Sports presentation of college football brought to you by Chevy Trucks, the most dependable, longest-lasting trucks on the road. Burger King, home with a Whopper. SBC, we're on it. And original Coors, nothing beats an original. Final five minutes of the ball game. Lloyd Carr, somebody said to me the other day, why is he not mentioned when you talk about, uh, you know, the top five, ten coaches in college football? And I said, I don't know, but he should be. I think part of it is... Uh, Lloyd's a very reserved, kind of mm -hmm. laid back guy. He doesn't have a boisterous personality like some. And doesn't look for the uh, media, nope. doesn't look for the publicity and the, uh, the notoriety. Would, you know, he's an old quarterback that uh, just came out. With, you know, he was a quarterback in college. Where did he go? Northern Michigan? Or, I think that was where he went. And he um, has always been in the defensive side of the coaching, always a defensive backfield coach, coordinator, Michigan. His percentage improves a little bit today. Philip Fulmer's drops down a little bit today in that statistic you just saw. Here's straight ahead run. Dave Underwood, the true freshman, is getting some work now. Big kid out of Texas. Got about four. But Lloyd, of course, had a national championship a few years ago. Mm -hmm. Undefeated season. Perfect. Na national coach of the year in 97. And really, this team is only about a bad two minutes against Washington on the road away from being undefeated. Yeah, and that was, they outplayed them. They just, they had a field goal block that was returned for a touchdown, and they had an interception right after that that was returned for a touchdown in the fourth quarter, or they would have won that ball game. Third down along one, and I think they got the one. Here's what we're talking about. The game on the road against a, this is uh, Illinois last week. Beg your pardon. These are the trick plays that work. Gonzalez, 51 yards from Marquise Walker. Now Cross goes and lofts one out there, and Walker catches it twice. That's when Lloyd said, if he'd have dropped that ball, I would have had to murder him. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Gonzalez getting some work now. He's been a receiver and now a quarterback, Richard Freshman, out of Pontiac. And he's a uh, pretty good sized kid, too. And a hit. Gino Capone on Dave Underwood after a short pickup. One of the things Carr will be happy about, uh, Michigan had no penalties. That's today. good coaching yeah. in itself right just, there. Just good coaching, yeah. You know, everybody thought that when Penn State came into the Big Ten in 93, that they would, they would dominate the Big Ten. Well, since they've been in the league, that's eight years, they've only won the title one time, and they've been to the Rose Bowl one time, and that same time period Northwestern has won the title three times and gone to the Rose Bowl three times and Wisconsin has played a part in that Rose Bowl picture too they've been several times that might be the most surprising score of the day I had it written down in front of me earlier was it 62 to 37 something, Indiana over something Wisconsin like something that. like that it was a huge win for Cam Cameron and his Hoosiers 
Joe Paterno will have to wait another week. In fact, he'll have to wait a couple of weeks because uh, the Nittany Lions are off next week. Then at Northwestern on the 20th, Ohio State the following week, and then Southern Mississippi is their homecoming game here. And uh, most of November, they're on the road, so it's not going to get any easier, that's for sure. Gonzalez got hit as he threw incomplete. Michael Haynes still in there on the spot. Let's check in Times Square Stadium and John. Hey. Right, here's the score you guys are talking about. Wisconsin and Indiana. Levron Williams, 56 yards. One of his six touchdowns in the game. It was 32-0 after the first quarter. They had 449 yards on the ground. And the worst Wisconsin defeat since 1890. Brad. I don't even know if wow. Camp Randall was Camp Randall then. I think yeah. they were just playing out in the pasture <laughs> those days. <laughs> wow. John Navarre's back in at quarterback. Gonzalez took a pretty big hit on that last play. And now Navarre out of the shotgun on a fourth down and penalty markers down. You know, Indiana had Five yards. Going up the down to, down to uh, Camp four. Randall. Looks like the uh, Badgers were looking, looking past the Hoosiers. Maybe. Two minutes, three seconds uh, remaining in the football game here as Beaver Stadium continues to empty out. Michigan, that's their first penalty. We were just talking about it. Yep. We're talking about Carr. You know, you look, you look at the seven years that he's been there, the seven years he's coached. He's won three Big Ten titles. He's won a national championship and a national coach of the year. Not bad. They put Navarre in there for a little quick kick, and his pooch punt is partially blocked. So the ball rolls to a stop. And Penn State will get it one more time when we come back. Final couple minutes from Beaver Stadium, Michigan, in control. I believe this is going to be the first time, unless Penn State puts points up, that they have been shut out at home since the Rip Engel era, isn't it? Been a long time, anyway. And motion. Another penalty coming out of a timeout. I think that's the third time that's happened to Penn State today. All -star. Well, that's not a good sign always. Felder, the left tackle, came out of a stance. And you, and you look at the paternal teams, and they are always the among the least penalized teams in the Big Ten. Mentally tired. And physically drained from being 0-4, soon to be 0-4. Mills throwing, Brian Johnson catching. 148 left here. Time to check in Times Square Stadium in New York again with John Saunders. John? Brad, you want to see why Oklahoma won a national championship last year? Watch Roy Williams here over the top, right into Chris Sims, into the hands of Teddy Lehman for the touchdown. And what would have been perhaps a go-ahead drive for Texas starting deep. Chris Sims, you see three interceptions. Oklahoma trying to hold on for the win. They're the champions till somebody beats them. When we did the Orange Bowl game, the championship game last year, it was it was the defense that stopped Florida State cold. They've got some great players, Calmus and Roy Williams on that defense. Pass complete, Eddie Drummond. Gonna be close to a first down in front of Marlon Jackson. Time permitting. Stay tuned for the thrifty car rental postgame report. John Terry will have scores and highlights from across the country. And uh, we may get an opportunity still to send you to the finish of that game in Texas. Mills in and out of the hands and intercepted Marlon Jackson. Third turnover. That one skipped off his receiver, Eddie Drummond's hands again, and that one you shouldn't blame on Zach Mills again. Now, and Marlon Jackson, the true freshman that they have such high hopes for, gets his first interception as a Michigan Wolverine. Another well, look. Excuse me, that's his second. Goes right through the hands of Drummond. Jackson is the one, uh, number 20 for Michigan, that they've likened uh, as the skills and the ability maybe to be another Woodson, Charles Woodson at Michigan. So really the story, the day and the season may be all encompassed in that uh, one play. What should be a first down or maybe a big play. Skips and slips out of the hands of the Nittany Lions and into the opposition. And that's kind of the way their 0-4 start has been. And now we're down to the final 120. As Michigan will go to 4-1, and 2-0 and in the conference. 
Penn State still looking and still searching for that elusive first win of the year and for the first time in the 115 year history of the storied Penn State program they will be 0 and 4. You got to hand it to Carr and his staff. Uh, they lost all those starters off of the offense seven for their offensive linemen went into the starters into the NFL. They lost their quarterback. Uh, they lost the wide receiver the guy that ran for their rushing yards leader and he just kind of reloads. He puts in some more offensive linemen. Askew steps up and has now we've got Marquise Walker doing the stuff that David Terrell did. So Michigan the recruiting process that they've done over the last few years they've always been one of the best and it shows in the games here today. Here's a give on a handoff to Underwood and he didn't get the first down as the clock is winding down. And Michigan will win it and shut out Penn State at Penn State hasn't happened in a long long time. Navarre with a big game. B.J. Askew an even bigger game offensively. A fast Michigan defense and a Penn State offense that just couldn't get it going again. That's going to wrap it up for Bob Greasy and Liz Warren. Brad Nessler from Happy Valley. Time to go to Times Square Stadium in New York. John Saunders and Terry Bowden. Fellas. All right, Brad. Terry will join me in a moment. But right now, time for some bonus coverage. A close game throughout today. Phil Simms' son, Chris, has thrown four interceptions in the game. And right now, Texas is trailing 14-3. Oklahoma has just had another pick. Let's go up for bonus coverage. On the Cotton Bowl in Dallas, Texas, with Gary Danielson and Jack Arruda, I'm Brad Musburger. It's been a dandy. But Oklahoma has answered the call all game long. They've made the big plays. They've made the right decisions. From the backup quarterback to a wonderful piece of football by number 38. And for those of you who just joined, is watch 38 from the left. Now watch number 11, Lehman. Stroll in for a touchdown. It was that easy. And just moments ago, Williams, number 38 again, made the interception. And the Horns have turned it over four times here today against Oklahoma. And how big, how big does that Oklahoma Nebraska game loom down the road? In Lincoln. Well, Brent, at halftime, I said that Oklahoma is battle tested. And you can see as this game emerged, they feel good about it. They looked at them at the clock and said, We've been here before. We've been in big games. We're used to it. But I'll tell you, every guy in this team is going to go up to that backup quarterback, Jason White, and say, Thank you for studying that Absolutely. game plan all week. Thank you for being ready to play and not pouting about losing the job in the fall. What a great point that is. There have been so many. So many MVPs for Oklahoma, but, but Jason White has to step in in the middle of the cauldron. Right. And he does the job replacing the injured Nate Hibble. He led the Sooners on their first touchdown scoring drive of the game. So we'll come back. We'll wrap it up. Oklahoma closing in on number 18 in a row.